<laughs> hey gang, and welcome back. Just a reminder, you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA at FlipSideGaming.com. You'll get 10% off orders of $10 or more, and help with the channel at the same time. You could also consider turning off your ad blocker when watching my videos. Thank you all for joining me, and welcome to today's EDH game. I am playing Grand Warlord Rada, and I keep a hand with Ghost Quarter, Sylvan Ranger, Elvish Archdruid, Stomping Ground, Chain Reaction, Flamekin Village, and Comet Storm. Eric is playing Vevictus as Mahdi the Dyer, and keeps a hand with Ulamog the Infinite Gyre, Lightning Greaves, Eternal Witness, Crucible of Worlds, Two Mountains, and Scalding Tarn. Chad is playing Galta, and keeps a hand with Two Forests, Elvish Mystic, Arbor Elf, Vizier of the Menagerie, Wood Elves, and Regal Force. Lastly, we have a new Josh joining us, and he's playing his Atraxa deck, and keeps Glacial Fortress, Temple of Silence, Hinterland Harbor, Arena Rector, Tuscard Captain, Cameo Field Researcher, and Vivian Reed. Chad wins the die roll, and starts us off. Chad plays a Forest, and casts Elvish Mystic. Eric plays a Scalding Tarn, and cracks it. He grabs a stomping ground, and passes. Josh plays a Temple of Silence, scrying the top card and putting it to the bottom. I play a Tap Flamekin Village as I have no elementals to reveal, and I pass. Chad plays a Forest and casts Wood Elves. He grabs a Forest, and then taps that Forest and casts Wild Growth on it. With nothing else, he passes. Eric plays a Mountain and casts Lightning Greaves. Josh plays a Tap Tinterland Harbor and passes to me. I play Stomping Ground untapped, taking two, and I cast a Sylvan Ranger. I search through my library to grab a forest card, and I put it to my hand. Chad plays another forest, and casts Arbor Elf. He then drops a Vizier of the Menagerie, and looks at the top card of his library. Moving to combat, Chad hits Josh for one with the Wood Elves, and passes to Eric. Eric plays a Mountain, and casts Crucible of Worlds, stating how he's not too sure that the world is ready for a turn 3 Galta. Josh plays a Breeding Pool untapped, and takes two damage. He pays 3 to cast Champion of the Lambholt, and passes turn. I drop a Ghost Quarter, and we discuss what I can do to keep Chad off from Galta. I don't have a Blasphemous Act in hand at this point, so I decide to pass and pray that someone draws removal. Chad plays a Dryad Arbor, and he taps out to cast Galta. Super. He looks at the top card of his library, and he passes turn. Eric plays a Scalding Tarn from his graveyard, and passes. Josh draws for turn, and plays a Flooded Strands. He casts Tuscar Champion, and the Champion of the Lambholt gains a counter. I draw for turn, and I play a Mountain. I decide we're not really in a great position, but if I can remove the dorks from Chad's side of the board, it'll be harder for him to recast his commander. I cast Chain Reaction, and the spell deals 9 damage to each creature on the field. With nothing else, I pass to Chad. Chad plays a Forest, and Eric and Josh crack their fetches to find a land. Chad casts a Dose in the Falling Leaf, and I learn why Galta is called the Primal Hunger, as he eats almost a third of my life in one swing. Eric replays and cracks his Scalding Tarn, taking one to go and find Badlands. Eric then casts the second saddest Eternal Witness of all time, because this time he can actually return a card, and brings back the Scalding Tarn to his hand before passing. Josh plays a Glacial Fortress untapped, and he casts Arena Rector to try and dissuade Chad from attacking him. I play a Forest for my turn, and I ask Chad nicely not to kill me. Chad plays a Utopia Sprawl in one of his forests, and all of my pleading has fallen on deaf ears as Galta takes me out of the game by dealing over 21 points of commander damage to me. With nothing else, he passes to Eric. Eric plays a Mountain, and casts Vivictus. He gears up his Dragon with the Lightning Greaves, and he moves to combat. He swings his commander at Chad, and Vivictus' attack trigger goes off. Eric picks Chad's Galta, Josh's Glacial Fortress, and one of Eric's own mountains. And they reveal a Forest for Chad, Chromatic Lantern for Eric, and an Isolated Chapel for Josh. With nothing else, Chad takes 6, and Eric passes. Josh pays 4 to cast an Ancient Excavation, something I'm surprised doesn't see more play. He draws 4, and then has to discard 4 cards. Josh plays a Flooded Grove, and makes a deal with Chad. He swings the Rector Chad's way, and Dosen stops the Rector, and upon dying, Josh exiles the Rector to tutor for a Planeswalker from his library. Josh grabs Ugin, and then down takes Ugin for minus 6 to exile most of the colored permanents on the board. Chad draws for turn, and passes. Eric plays a Command Tower, and pays 7 to cast Butcher of Malakir. He puts the Greaves onto the Vampire, and swings the Butcher to take out Ugin. Josh taps out to cast the Deploy the Gatewatch, but he whiffs and has to bottom all the cards. Chad plays a Forest and taps out to cast a Regal Force. He draws only one card, which is kind of sad. He then passes to Eric. Eric draws for turn and replaces Scalding Tarn, cracking it and taking one. He finds a Mountain and puts it onto the field. 
He now has enough mana to recast his commander, and does so, kicking the boots off his butcher and putting them onto his majestic Jun Dragon. Moving to combat, Eric swings Vivictus at Chad and the butcher at Josh. Eric picks Chad's regal force, one of Josh's lands, and one of his own mountains. Chad reveals a forest, Eric reveals a Necrogen Mists, and Josh reveals a Contagion Clasp. Josh puts the minus one minus one counter from the class onto the Butcher, and Chad then takes six, while Josh only takes four. Josh discards a Corpse Axe Menace on his upkeep to the Necrogen Mist trigger, and he plays an Atraxa. Josh then passes, and Atraxa's trigger at the end of turn goes off, and he proliferates the minus one minus one counter on the Butcher at the end of his turn. Chad discards a Wirewood Lodge on his upkeep, and draws for turn. He casts Nissa, Basswood Seer, and finds a forest putting it to his hand. He plays it, and Nissa flips. Chad then down takes Nissa to make a 4 4 legendary Ashaya token, but then sacrifices it as part of the cost of natural order. Chad grabs a Woodland Bellower, whose Enter the Battlefield trigger allows him to go search for another creature card as long as it costs 3 or less, is green, and isn't legendary. Chad goes and finds a Manglehorn, and the Manglehorn's Enter the Battlefield trigger destroys Eric's Lightning Greaves. Eric discards Blood Crypt to his Necrogen Mist trigger, and he plays the Blood Crypt from his graveyard as his land for turn. In his first main phase, Eric casts Nether Void and moves to combat. He swings Vivictus at Nyssa and targets Chad's Woodland Bellower, Josh's Flooded Grove, and his own Butcher of Malakir. With the Butcher dying, this forces everyone to sacrifice a creature, which pretty much wipes out the board. They then reveal off the top, with Eric hitting a Bayou, Josh finding a Forgotten Ancient, and Chad whiffing with a Beast Within. Josh discards an inspiring call in his upkeep to the Mist Trigger, and plays a Plains in his main phase. With nothing else, he passes. Chad has nothing to discard to the Necrogen Mist Trigger, and he draws for his turn. He pays 6 mana, and he casts Beast Within, not having it countered by the Nether Void, and destroys Evictus. Josh's Forgotten Ancient gains a plus 1 plus 1 counter as Chad has cast a spell. Eric discards Ulamog on his upkeep to the Mist Trigger, and he shuffles his graveyard into his library. He plays a Misty Rainforest as his land for turn, and he states he has enough mana to cast Evictus, but not enough to pay for the Nether Void, which, unless I'm mistaken, is the exact same thing as not having enough mana. Eric then casts Vraska, Relic Seeker, making sure to pay the extra 3. Josh's Forgotten Ancient gains another plus 1 plus 1 counter, and Eric then upticks his Planeswalker, gaining a 2-2 Black Pirate with Menace. Moving to combat, Eric swings the Beast at Chad for 3. With nothing else, he passes, but Josh proliferates at the end of turn to give his Ancient another plus 1 plus 1 counter. Josh discards Tamio in his upkeep, and doesn't know what to do. He decides to pay 4 mana to cast a Soul Ring, which is just not good. This gives his Forgotten Ancient another plus one plus one counter, and he swings it at Vraska. The Ancient is stopped by Eric's Black Pirate token, and with nothing else, Josh passes. Chad draws and plays a Yavimaya Hollow as his land for turn. He then passes to Eric. Eric discards Thrag Tusk and draws. He plays a Misty Rainforest from his graveyard to the field, and then pays enough mana to plus three to cast a Runescar Demon. This gives Josh's Forgotten Ancient another plus one plus one counter. Eric finds a card, and he puts it to his hand. He then upticks Vraska to make another pirate token. Eric then swings the beast at Chad again for another 3, and he passes to Josh. Josh discards another version of Tamio in his upkeep, and he draws for turn. He casts Tezzeret Artifice Master, but it gets countered by the Nether Void, but his Forgotten Ancient does gain a plus 1 plus 1 counter. Josh then moves to combat, and swings the Ancient at Vraska once more, and Eric once again blocks with his pirate token. At the end of Josh's turn, Eric cracks his Misty Rainforest, taking 1 to go find a forest. Chad draws for turn, and all but taps out to cast a Territorial Alisar. It enters, and it fights Eric's Beast, which is not the greatest of turns. Eric discards Rurik Thar to his Mist Trigger, and asks how much mana Josh is at. After hearing only 7, Eric decides to downtick Frasca to use her ultimate, and sets Chad to 1, and immediately follows up by swinging the Runescar Demon to finish him off. Eric then pays 9 to cast a Lurking Predators, and Josh adds another plus 1 plus 1 counter to his Forgotten Ancient. Josh has nothing to discard, and he draws for turn. He plays a Swamp, and doesn't have enough to recast Atraxa. He proliferates the Forgotten Ancient with his Contagion Clasp, and then sends it Eric's direction. Eric takes 8, and Josh then passes. On Eric's upkeep, he discards Garak Collar the Beast to his Mistrigger. He then pays 4 and 3 extra to cast Helm of the Host, and equips it onto his Runescar Demon. Eric moves to combat, and he gets a token copy of the Demon, and goes to tutor for a card. He then hits Josh for 6 with the real copy, and he passes turn. Josh draws for turn, and plays a lore scale Kotal, which triggers Eric's Lurking Predators. Eric reveals a mountain, which goes to the bottom of his library. Josh then swings the Ancient once more at Eric, who blocks with his token copy of the Runescar Demon. 
With nothing else, Josh passes. Eric discards Mana Crypt and draws for turn. He plays a Forest and he casts Acidic Slime. He blows up Josh's Soul Ring and then equips the Helm onto the Acidic Slime. Moving to combat, he makes a token copy of the Acidic Slime, blowing up Hinterland Harbor. He then swings the Rootscar Demon at Josh for 6, and he passes. Josh puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Kotal, and then casts a Lotus Cobra in his main phase. This triggers Lurking Predators, and Eric reveals another non-creature card. With nothing else, Josh passes. Eric has nothing to discard, and draws for turn. He plays a Bloodstained Mire, and moves to combat. He makes another Acidic Slime, blowing up the Breeding Pool, and hits Josh for 6 in the air with the Runescar Demon. Josh draws for turn, but is now missing that critical green mana to cast what he drew. With nothing else, he passes. Eric has nothing to discard, and he draws for his turn. He then taps almost all of his mana to recast Evictus, and moves to combat. He makes another copy of the Acidic Slime, blowing up Josh's Temple of Silence, and Josh realizes he can't win, and concedes to Eric. Game review time! So, I don't really have much to say about my deck, mostly because I think I only got to cast about 4 spells before I died. It seems like I got the short end of the stick this game, and Chad wanted to commit all of the attacks initially to kill one player with commander damage before moving on to the next. I don't really blame him, since it becomes harder and harder to win through combat damage the later the game goes. Vivictus performed significantly better than I thought he would, and I thought it was the opponents who got to choose the permanent that was destroyed, not the controller of Vivictus. Eric's list ran no instants or sorceries, which means that every time he had to sacrifice one of his own permanents, he would be guaranteed to get something in return. I thought this was a unique and cool way to build him, and it was a lot of fun to see. Josh's Atraxa deck was your typical Super Friends deck, and I was very surprised to see him whiff off to play the Gatewatch. I've seen decks like these perform very well, but only when there's the control support to back them up. Unfortunately for this game, there wasn't really any of it, and Josh was losing his Planeswalkers left, right, and center. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.